What's going on guys? I'm Pete and welcome to Retro Game Attic. So in this episode, I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to jailbreak your Wii and install an NES emulator on it. All you really need is a working Wii, a computer, and an SD card, preferably four gigabytes and up. So now that we got that out of the way, let's boot up the Wii and get started. All right, now that we have the Wii console booted up, we're going to want to check the Wii firmware. So in order to do that, we go to the bottom left-hand corner here to Wii Options. Then we'll go to Wii Settings. And then you can see in the top right hand corner here, we have version 4.3U, and that's the version that we want, so we're good to go there. But we have one more thing to check out, we need to look at the MAC address. We're going to scroll over to the right, we're in screen number 2 here, we go to Internet, and then Console Information. Here's where you'll find your MAC address, so take a picture with your phone, or write it down, or do whatever you gotta do. You're going to need that number for when we download Letterbomb. We have a little prep work to do here with our SD card, let's make sure that it's formatted to MS-DOS FAT. I'm on an older MAC. The process will be a little bit different for a newer Mac or a Windows computer, but you get the picture. Just make sure it's formatted to FAT. So we ran it through its process, and now you can see that it's formatted to MS-DOS FAT32, so we're good to go. Now that we formatted the SD card, we're going to download Letterbomb, so let's go to please.hackney.com, and this is what shows up here. You have to select your system menu version, we input 4.3U. Next up, you input your Mac address, and make sure that bundle, the Hackney installer for me, is checked. And then you can cut the red or the blue wire, it doesn't really matter, so let's cut the red wire. And then we'll download this zip file right to the SD card, so we'll press save. So last step here, we need to make sure that the zip file is unzipped, so let's run that real quick. And then we can delete the zip file when we're done with it. So now that we unzip the files, your SD card should look just like this. So let's pop it into the Wii, and then we'll install Letterbomb. Alright, so now that we have the Wii booted up again, we're going to go to Wii Message Board. It could be in your current day, or it could be a couple days behind you, just scroll back and forth here. But in our case, we have it on today's date. This is Letterbomb here. So we're going to click on that and we let it do its thing. It's going to run here. You'll have this little screen that comes up. This is all normal. We press one to continue. And then from here, we're just going to want to click continue. And then we're going to want to install the homebrew channel, install the homebrew channel. Now, yes, continue. We'll give it a minute to go here. Success. And then we're all done here. So we'll go return to the main menu and then exit. And that's it guys. Homebrew channel is installed. It's as simple as that. Click the home button and we'll exit to system menu. So now that we're on the home menu here, you can see that the homebrew channel is installed. So it is as simple as that. But what good is the homebrew channel without some emulators? So let's go through the quick steps on how to do those. So we'll shut the Wii down and we'll go back to the computer to download some of those emulator files. So now that we're back on the computer, let's navigate to WeeBrew.org and we'll search for FCE Ultra GX. This is a really solid NES emulator that runs really well on the Wii. So we'll scroll over to the download links, we'll click download, and then we're going to want to download the channel installer zip and then the file, the 3.5. 4 zip so let's download those right now and we're going to save them to the root of our SD card okay now that we navigated back over to our SD card I reformatted things a little bit I deleted the stuff that we didn't need from before and I created an apps folder and then here's the two zip files that we just downloaded so let's extract those so now that we have the two folders extracted we can delete those old zip files and then let's open up FCE Ultra GX first and then we'll navigate to the apps folder within there we're going to take this folder with these three files in here and then back out to the root of our SD card and put them in the apps folder. So we can copy this folder and we'll back out. And now we're at the root of our SD card. We'll put it right in the apps folder. And then we'll do the same thing for the channel installer. We'll go to apps, channel installer. It'll have those three files. So let's copy this folder. We'll back out to the root and put them right in that apps folder. And that's all the work we need to do on the SD card. So let's eject that and get it back into the Wii. All right, so we have our SD card loaded into the Wii. So let's go back onto the homebrew channel. And then here we go right here. We have the two FCE Ultra GX install files. So let's install the channel first we'll click load and then it'll run you through a few prompts here do you want to install this channel let's click install and there it is we installed FCE Ultra GX onto the Wii it was really an easy process as you can see now I'm not going to tell everybody where to get ROMs but chances are if you're watching this video you're probably computer savvy enough to know where to get them so let's hop back on the computer real quick I'm gonna create a ROMs folder on my SD card and load up a few ROMs for games that I already do own just to check this out all right so we're back on the Wii home menu so as you can see we have have the FCE Ultra GX channel right on here so let's click on that and you can see I have a ROMs folder and I have NES and then we have Felix the Cat so we'll press the A button on the Wii remote to load it up and there it is guys it's working great so the process to load other emulators on here is going to be very similar so if you can load the NES emulator you can pretty much load any other one they're all going to work pretty well anyway I hope you guys found this video useful and if you did please be sure to shoot me a message in the comments I love hearing from you guys and as always thank you so much for checking out Retro Game Attic
quick. I really do appreciate you all. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you on the next one.